Hello, Laverne here, and thank you for joining me. May this video be a blessing to you, and may it honor and glorify God in His kingdom. Over the past year or so, I've made a good number of videos exposing Apostle Paul as a false apostle, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, the one argument that Christians seem to think should silence me has to do with a passage that's found in 2 Peter chapter 3. And if you've been a Christian for more than 15 minutes, you probably know the passage I'm talking about. It has to do where supposedly Peter tells us that we should consider Paul's uh, epistles as scripture. But can we believe that Peter actually wrote this part? For I believe Peter did write 2 Peter, but when it comes to the one and a half verses that speak to Paul, I believe this was actually inserted by a scribe at some point to try and give more weight to Paul's letters, to add more weight to his apostolic authority. And I believe there's good evidence just within this passage that goes to show that we cannot trust this as having been written by Peter. Now, to save time, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, but I'm going to begin with verse 14. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand, and those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture, and this will result in their destruction. What we see is that Partway down, verse 15, halfway down, and then to uh, uh, the end of verse 16 is talking about Paul. I have four points I'd like to bring up. Four points, I believe, that show that Peter did not actually write these one and a half verses. The first thing I'd like to do is now read the same passage, but I'm going to skip halfway down uh, verse 15. Or I'm going to read halfway down verse 15 skip the later half and skip verse 16 and then read verse 17 and we'll see that it flows equally smooth without uh, the one and a half verses talking about Paul. So uh, I'll, I'll again begin with verse 14. And so dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in His sight. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. I am warning you ahead of time, dear friends. Be on guard so that you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All glory to Him, both now and forever. Amen. So you see, it flows equally well with or without the one and a half verses that refer to Paul. Now my next point has to do with uh, how it is that uh, Peter supposedly refers to him, for he calls him brother. Not apostle, but brother. And if this were being read in a church, anyone reading this would consider this a slight. It would actually be an insult. because. Peter refers to himself as an apostle at the beginning of this letter. And then partway through, he talks about apostles in the plural sense. But when it comes to referring to Paul, he actually just calls him a brother. He doesn't give him the apostolic authority uh, by calling him an apostle. This here should be very, very telling. Now, the next point I'd like to talk about has to do with... Uh, the fact that he says uh, it's difficult to understand his writings. And I, I want to read that part again from the New Living. Some of his comments are hard to understand. Now notice he, Peter isn't saying some less learned people, although he does go on to say that it is the less learned people who twist his letters. But he says his letters are difficult to understand. This then cannot be considered inspired writings, never should be, for God is not a God of confusion. Now if this is true, if Paul's letters are hard to understand and they are considered inspired, 
they are considered to be scripture, then this means God is in fact a God of confusion. But we know He's not. A God who is not a God of confusion would not inspire and would not have inspired works in His written word that are confusing. It simply would not happen. And Peter knows this. Now, what about the fact that he calls it Scripture? Can anyone show me anywhere in the history of Scripture that anyone had their writings declared Scripture before they were actually passed away? Is there any prophet, is there any precedence for this of anyone's writings being declared Scripture before they passed away? I don't think there is. I've looked and I haven't been able to find it. Now, if you know of such an instance, I'd really like to hear it. But I really don't believe that Peter would have called Paul's writings scripture in his lifetime. I also think it would take more than just Peter doing this. And if there had been some kind of council held to determine what would be considered New Testament scripture, well, don't you think we would have heard about it? Don't you think somebody would have written about it? But there are no such writings. And the reason is because it was never done. Paul's letters were not considered scripture during his lifetime. There simply is nothing to back this up whatsoever. My final point has to do with the fact that Peter says that Paul writes in all his letters about the long suffering of Jesus. I'm going to read that part again. Uh, I'm just going to begin with verse 15. And remember, our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother also wrote to you with the wisdom, of, uh, with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all his letters. But can anyone show me anywhere in Paul's letters where he wrote about the long suffering, in other words, the patience of the Lord, so that more people can be saved? I tell you, it's not in his letters. In fact, the opposite is true. Paul writes the very opposite thing of what we find Peter saying here. Peter is telling us that the second coming of the Lord is not imminent. He's patient. It's going to be a while. Paul, however, in his letters, tells us that it's imminent, that it's just around the corner. We can expect his coming, his second coming, any time. So Peter and Paul write total opposite in regards to the second coming of Christ. Peter says it's going to be a while. The Lord is patient. Paul says it's eminent. Expect it any time. In fact, Paul goes on to say people shouldn't even get married. Avoid getting married and having children because of the terrible time that's going to come. Well, can you imagine if people actually listen to Paul? If no one did get married because they thought the second coming of the Lord was just around the corner? So when we look at these points I just brought up, just that one point alone shows that Peter could not have written this about Paul because Paul contradicts the writing of Peter here regarding the long suffering of the Lord so that more people will be saved. The patience of our Lord. And Peter is the one who is right. Peter is right here. It's actually a, a prophetic account here. He's giving us prophecy here that it's going to be a while, whereas Paul taught the opposite. All right, as always, I look forward to comments and messages. What do you think about these four points I brought up? Do you still believe that this can be trusted? Or reading this, after taking out these one and a half verses, does it make equal sense? Does it flow equally well? I believe it does. And I believe it is evidence that this was inserted. And it was inserted strictly for the purpose of giving more credence and more authority to Paul. And it has worked. For that was a trick of Satan. Satan did this in order that more credence, more authority more weight would be given to the letters of Paul. Alright, as always, I do look forward to comments and messages. Till next time, peace and blessings.